about um, uh, you know, what the BBC should give up, what it should do more of, how it could help other parts of the media. At the minute, there's a big debate about how uh, the BBC can help regional media coverage. And that should be something that's very dear to all of us because regional coverage uh, is a really important part of our democratic process. People's right to know locally about things that are happening in their courts, in their magistrates' courts, in their councils, is a fundamental part of you know, how we understand and go about our daily life. And it's under pressure. If local newspapers are closing, clearly there can be an issue with whether the same amount of coverage uh, exists. Now, PA will still do lots of local coverage when it's big enough, but there's a whole range of other things that need covering as well. And the discussion really is about um, the BBC and the regional media. They're discussing how they might work more closely together as part of the charter renewal. And options on the table include the BBC sharing uh, a whole load of its video with um, the regional media. So as soon as the BBC's published any video, it will give it to all the regional media. And the other part of the deal is the BBC could potentially commission content from regional media. So the regional media will provide a range of its content to the BBC every day. Now for, for us, you know, we do all of that stuff. That's what PA does. We, we provide content of that type to all those people. So you can see there's potentially a threat uh, to us, uh, but we prefer to view this um, as a real opportunity for... Uh, PA, because given our pedigree that we've been uh, involved with regional media for um, 147 years, uh, we, have, uh, we, we provide content to the BBC, we provide it to the regional press, we should be the pivotal central part of this new relationship. So however this evolves over the next few weeks and months, we believe that the PA can be a central part in what can be a very positive process. Now that could be around how we do our our diaries, how we do the forward planning, how we deploy journalists, uh, how with our network we can distribute content to anybody anywhere in the country. We ought to be the sandwich in the middle of this new uh, relationship. And given what we already know about the BBC's standards, we could also be that kind of final checking point around quality. Uh, is it good enough? Is the style right? Uh, is it legally sound? Again, it's a role that PA could play in any new relationship between uh, the regional press and the BBC. It's something we're passionate about, we're talking to uh, the regional media, we're talking to the BBC, we're talking to the News Media Association, which is a, the umbrella organisation for regional media, and we're doing that to push home the case that the, the PA, given its heritage and its unique relationship with all the people involved, should be that glue that could hold together a very positive partnership for uh, the future and for the future of regional media. Finally, finally, I'll get off my um, uh, hobby horse. Um, the Freedom of Information Act, you should all know about the Freedom of Information Act, you should all be passionate about it. It's something we should be hugely proud of in the UK uh, as a way that we hold our public bodies to account. And over the years, there have been some extraordinary stories that have come from freedom of information requests. You should also hopefully be aware that it is under some threat now. Uh, the government has set up a panel that's going to review whether the FOI Act should continue in its present form. A panel of six people have been put together. None of them are particularly, it would appear, advocates of the Freedom of Information Act. Some of them have been the subjects of inquiries about the FOI, FOIs previously. So we can expect, I think, quite a choppy ride as this panel considers the future of the FOI Act. Some of the things they're considering as does it take too much time? Is it too costly? Should people pay for a, for a request? All the kinds of things that we could expect would blunt the FOI in its current form. So we should be passionate about this. And I mean, PA, as an example, over, just over the last two or three months, countless examples of stories that have appeared on big sites have all come from the PA, uh, and they've come because we've done FOI requests. So you might remember the John Burko, the speaker one, how much he was spending on getting a taxi to go 0.7 miles. That came from a PA Freedom of Information request. So PA will be passionate again in its defence of the FOI Act. We've already put our name to a letter registering our concern. Uh, we now have a number of weeks left to make an official uh, representation, which we will be doing uh, in any small way be a champion of FOI. Talk about it with your friends. Uh, make sure that people that you know about, your parents, anybody know that this is something that is seriously under threat and it should be at the cornerstone of a free 
um, of a free media where people have the right to know about what's happening in their public institutions. And if it takes people's time in public institutions and it costs them some time to explain what's happening in those institutions that we're paying for, that's money well spent. We should be passionate about this. And PA, I think, with, again, with its heritage, this is exactly the kind of area where we should be very vocal uh, about the need for this act to be preserved in its current form. So um, I'm sorry the talk's ended with me on my hobby horse about a couple of things, but um, here's the website. Go and have a look at it and find out more if you don't know more already. Um, and uh, that's me then. Thank you very much.